divided by. We've come a long, long way together. I have to praise you. Every moment together is a gift. La vie est belle, l'encombre. At Macy's, the happening now. A woman murdered and Bear County deputies are looking for her killer as we speak. Our Devin Clark live with what we know right now. Domestic violence expected to spike this holiday season. I'm Courtney Friedman. How you can create a safety plan if you need to leave quickly. With COVID hospitalizations on the rise, the availability of staffed beds shrinking again. What happens next as cases continue to roll in? Rather spring-like outside today, but in a matter of days, it all changes that and some rain in the forecast. I'll see you in a few minutes to talk about it. The social media, email, text messages, great ways to stay connected, but soon debt collectors may use them to contact you. What to expect in 2021? The News at 5 starts right now. First at five, a woman found dead on the northeast side. Her killer still at large. The Bear County Sheriff's Office tells us the victim was exercising before she was killed, shot in the 7600 block of Terrassa. That's near Walsham Road. That's where we find our Devin Clark. Devin, what else do we know about what happened out there? Well, Steve Ursula, right now I can tell you it's hard to see exactly what's going on behind me, but the medical examiner's office is on scene right now in the process of removing the victim's body. This after investigators spent hours here on the 7600 block of Terrassa combing through this area looking for evidence and also speaking to neighbors. They're trying to get some surveillance footage from any of these homes here nearby. What we do know is that... According to Sheriff Javier Salazar, a 24-year-old woman named Giovanna Barrera was roller skating, something that she was known to do. And it appears that she had skated back to her driveway here on this street and sat in her car to take her skates off when, for an unknown reason, a man approached and fired a shot at close range, hitting her in her upper body, killing her. Salazar believes that a woman suspect was also involved and that she's the one who drove away from the scene. Now, while Salazar said Barrera did not live a high-risk risk lifestyle involving drugs, prostitution, or organized crime. He does believe that she was targeted for some reason. That reason, though, still unknown. And as far as this neighborhood is concerned, we're hearing mixed reaction from people who live here. One man who's only lived here for about a year says it's usually quiet. Meanwhile, one woman who says she's been here since the 1970s says this community has a history of violence. I'm not surprised because we hear gunshots all the time. Now, unfortunately, right now there is no suspect description, but there is a vehicle description. Sheriff Javier Salazar asking for folks to be on the lookout for a black Chevy HHR. It's a short SUV, and they say that it has aftermarket chrome rims. If you have any information about this crime that happened here today in Northeast Bear County, you're asked to call Crime Stoppers at number 210-224-STOP. For now, reporting live in Northeast Bear County, Devin Clark, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Devin. Domestic violence always spikes during the holidays when family gathered and stressors increase. The pressure of the pandemic and stay home recommendations making this holiday season especially dangerous. Advocates say that's why it's more important than ever for victims to have a safety plan in place. Courtney Freeman walks us through how to do just that as part of her series confronting domestic violence, loving in fear. The first part of a safety plan is tough for some people. Setting up contacts you can alert during an emergency, whether it's family, friends, neighbors, or coworkers. You should have a code word, code phrase, so that the abuser doesn't even know what you're talking about. Dahlia Rivas is a victim's advocate, training SAPD's crisis response team officers and joining them to assist victims of domestic violence. She says survivors should have a bag ready in case you need to leave quickly. We would want you to have like a a uh, bag somewhere where it has important documents, maybe an extra key, a little bit of extra cash. She says if you're still in the relationship, try to move arguments to safer rooms. She says try to stay away from rooms like kitchens where there can be lots of weapons around and rooms with just one exit, like a bathroom. Riva says when you do leave, create distance. If they don't have a place to go, we can make those arrangements for them. We can place them in a safe location where 
uh, the batter is not going to have access to them. The batter women and children shelter is always open, whether someone needs to stay one night or several months. Call or text 911 at any point, whether you're leaving, going back to get items, or even doing a custody exchange for your child. The crisis response team can go with you and then lead you to resources. Where to go and apply for a protective order. Uh, we help them with initiating charges. We try to educate them on the domestic violence dynamics. Lastly, no one knows your safety situation like you do. Leaving is dangerous, so make that safety plan, but only use it when you're ready. Courtney Friedman, KSAT 12 News. There are crisis response officers and advocates at every single SAPD substation. To reach them in a non-emergency, you can call SAPD at 210-207-7273. We also have a list of resources at KSAT.com slash domestic violence. The search continues for the person who shot and killed a 24 year old man last night. That victim identified as Josh Fowler reportedly visiting a home on DuBose Road in Southeast Bear County when an argument ended in gunfire. Right now it remains unclear who exactly Fowler was arguing with. The sheriff's office says Fowler was taken to the hospital where he later died. As of this morning, no one has been arrested. Crime Stoppers offering a reward to help crack a 2017 murder case. They're looking for information in the fatal shooting of Detranix Hawkins. She died in December of 2017 after she was shot on Highway 281 in Stadium Drive. Crime Stoppers releasing these photos of the alleged car involved, a black sedan with dark tinted windows. Investigators say it may still have damage to the right rear passenger door. Hawkins was eight weeks pregnant when she died. If you have any information, you're being asked to call Crime Stoppers at 210-224-STOP. President-elect Joe Biden continuing to make cabinet moves today, announcing retired General Lloyd Austin as his pick to lead the Department of Defense. If sworn in, Austin would be the first black defense secretary in U.S. history. His nomination has challenges, however. Austin, who retired from active duty four years ago, would require a waiver from Congress to make his position official. The same waiver was granted to President Trump's nomination four years ago. And despite some Democrats saying they're hesitant to do it again, the president-elect says he is confident in his choice. I know this man. I know his respect for our Constitution. I know his respect for our system of government. Meanwhile, Hunter Biden, Joe Biden's son, announcing today that he is under investigation for tax evasion in Delaware. In a statement, the transition team said, quote, President-elect Biden is deeply proud of his son who has fought through difficult challenges, including the vicious personal attacks of recent months, only to emerge stronger, end quote. Hospital beds filling up as more COVID patients are hospitalized. But the head of the organization that oversees the regional emergency health care system says things aren't quite dire yet. As of yesterday, less than 9% of staffed hospital beds were available in Bear County. But the executive director of Southwest Texas Regional Advisory Council, or STRAC, says the hospital system is busy right now, but it is not in crisis. He expects the availability to vary. I think it will wax and wane. We'll get tighter. We'll add more units or more staff, and then it'll it'll come back a little bit, and then we'll get tighter. That's a, that's the nature of managing healthcare at this point, honestly. The state contract can supply nurses and respiratory therapists to help create more staffed beds at hospitals and at the still unused alternate care center at Freeman Coliseum. Meantime, we are just one day away from learning whether the Food and Drug Administration will grant emergency use authorization for COVID-19 vaccine. The Pfizer and BioNTech vaccine already approved in Canada and the UK. So far, though, two healthcare workers in the UK had an allergic reaction. Both had a history of significant reactions and both quickly recovered. UK health officials say as a precaution, people with a history of allergic reactions probably should hold off until more is known. The FDA says the risk is not a major concern and health experts are hoping that Americans will trust the evidence. We must build a trust in American people. We must make them understand that the science that went into this, that the oversight that went into this is gold standard. Myself. It is estimated as many as 20 million people will receive the vaccine over the next few weeks. And early next year, there should be enough vaccines for all Americans who want to receive one. 
No spring like day outside this afternoon. I mean, we started out relatively cool at 41 degrees, then we topped out at 80 for the afternoon high temperature. And right now we are largely in the 70s. You take a look at our weather watcher readings and 78 Floresville, Lake East 74. We're mostly in the mid 70s. It's very comfortable and pleasant out there as we speak. However, as we go through the evening, temperatures falling off a bit, just not as significantly as the past couple of nights. We'll be in the mid 50s by 10 p.m. and I think we'll all be above freezing early tomorrow morning. We have another space station flyover this evening. I'll tell you about that. And of course, rain chances along with a cold front coming up. Thank you so much, Adam. Christmas is just over two weeks away, and if you are looking for a new furry friend to add to your family as the ultimate Christmas gift, Buyer beware. A surge in pet scams during the pandemic now triggering a nationwide warning from the Better Business Bureau. You're going to have a great time in our house. The pandemic has spiked demand for furry friends, as well as the number of people falling victim to online pet scams. Scammers taking advantage of people who are stuck at home feeling lonely and isolated. According to the Better Business Bureau, the number of reported pet scams has more than doubled during the shutdown. In the past 12 months, victims are estimated to have lost more than $3 million. That's more than six times greater than the total losses reported three years ago. It's why the BBB is warned people about buying kittens and puppies from breeders online. The BBB says by the end of November, it received nearly 4,000 scam reports, with many victims saying they sent in money, but they never got the pet they paid for. Months into the pandemic, many states have experienced huge surges in animal adoptions, and with demand being so great in some shelters, many people were forced to look for pets online. My whole family's home from the COVID, so yeah, they have extra attention. I was jumping for joy. I was so excited um, and pretty much couldn't sleep at all yesterday. If you're looking to buy online, the BBB has three recommendations. Number one, see the pet in person before paying any money. Two, use tactics like reverse image searches and compare prices. And three, look for animal shelters online that still have your fur babies for adoption. Oh, I can smell the puppy breath from here. Here at home, Animal Care Services is offering discounted pet adoptions starting today. You can take a dog home for $25. You can take a cat home for $15. The Empty the Shelters event runs through December 13th. Adoptions are by appointment only. We have all this information on kset.com. And remember, while a new pet can make for a fun gift, owning a pet is a long-term commitment. It was so many people out of jobs this year. The one thing you don't want to do when Christmas shopping is break the bank and accrue credit card debt, especially if you don't want creditors contacting you via social media come next year. Up next, when the new regulations take effect and how you can best manage communications coming up. This essay salute holiday greeting is brought to you by Blue Ribbon Auto Collision Center. My name is Olga Herrera. Quiero dar las gracias a todos los primeros que atienden a todos los enfermos de esta pandemia. Quiero dar las gracias a los médicos, a las enfermeras y a todos los militares. Gracias por su servicio. Quiero desearles una feliz Navidad y un próspero año nuevo lleno de amor y felicidad para todos. Gracias. With so many job losses this year, debt is part of the picture. For some, that means calls from debt collectors. And starting late next year, collectors will also be allowed to contact people by email, text messages, even through social media. 12 on your side's Marilyn Moritz on how to manage those communications. Social media actually to family and friends, but soon you might get a message from a debt collector. A year from now, when this new rule takes effect, debt collectors will be able to send an unlimited number of text messages, emails, hit you up on social media as much as they want, as well as call you up to seven times a week, and sometimes maybe more. With a new rule beginning late next year, the ways collection agencies can legally contact 
greatly expand. Trying to collect legitimate debt is perfectly legal, but the industry has a history of aggressive tactics. The problem is debt collectors are notorious for hounding consumers over debts that have already been paid off or were never even owed in the first place. The collection industry welcomes the change, calling it a significant step in updating out practice practices that hurt small businesses and left consumers in the dark. Even with these changes, there are still consumer protections to guard against aggressive and even illegal collections. For example, if a debt collector contacts you, you can request verification of the debt and expect to receive that in the mail in about five days. Also, Texas has a four-year statute of limitations of how long a debt can be collected. Do not pay any part of the debt until you are certain that you owe it. Otherwise, you could accidentally revive old debt you no longer owe. If you don't recognize a charge, check your credit report for possible ID theft. And if you do owe the money but can't afford it, try negotiating a repayment plan you can't afford. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. It is not clear how collection agencies will actually use social media. Facebook says it's reviewing the new rule and will work with the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau to understand how it affects Facebook and Instagram users. We are enjoying one of the prettiest days you could ask for in wintertime. Right, it is beautiful out there. It does look like our rain chances have increased just a little bit as we get into Friday. So I'm going to talk about that. Some cooler weather that's going to make it feel well like fall again and even almost winter like in the extended forecast. But we do have another space station flyover this evening and I want to point out and get you ready for at 623 PM. It's going to start. It's going to last only six minutes. It's going to appear in the north northwest and disappear to the east southeast. So at 623 PM look to the north northwest and it's really the one acre of solar panels connected to the space station that makes it visible sometimes at dusk and dawn you get that low angle light that'll that'll hit those panels and it can make it visible to us when it's in the right spot so really cool we can see that again this evening it's going to last a little, little bit longer than what we had yesterday and very good viewing for the space station look at the clear sky out there a few high thin clouds along the Rio Grande and far south of San Antonio, but that's it. Otherwise, we're looking at another clear sky. The disturbance that we've been watching for a few days and we're still tracking is off to our west, and it's still over the Pacific Ocean. There's a little bit of moisture with it. You see some shower activity uh, just offshore from Southern California and off the Baja Peninsula here. That upper disturbance, that's going to continue to push our way. It's going to pass to the north of us, so not ideal placement in terms of rainfall. Most of the moisture is going to be to the north of us, and of course, some snow associated with it where it's colder. But as we get into Friday, I think we're going to start the day with a fair amount of dampness here in South Texas. So tomorrow, another sunny day. Friday morning, fog and drizzle. And I do think we've got better odds of scattered showers for the first part of Friday. This will be affecting the Friday morning commute. And I think all the way through about the midday hours, then we get into the afternoon. It all retreats eastward and we start to clear out nicely for Friday evening activities, including, of course, Friday night football. Notice 6 p.m. Friday clear sky. So basically it's Friday morning through about the noon hour is our window of opportunity for some of those scattered showers. We're giving it about a 40% chance, so about 40% coverage across South Texas for the actual showers that'll be hit or miss. And within those, we could have a 10th to maybe a quarter of an inch of rain. So I think that's what we're looking at here. And a quarter of an inch, I think would be the exception generally north of San Antonio. Temperatures right now in the 60s by tomorrow morning. We'll find ourselves above freezing, even in the hill country, upper 30s hill country, mid 40s elsewhere. And by the afternoon, we make our way into the mid 70s. And we'll have a little increase of cloud cover by the afternoon tomorrow. That's in advance of that disturbance. And then Friday morning, it's going to be damp with drizzle and some of those scattered showers, but clearing out by Friday evening. Look at the cooler weather this weekend, 60s by Monday. Highs in the upper 50s, so feeling the chill again at that point. Mm. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Adam. All right, Tuesday night football was not kind to the Dallas Cowboys. I'm surprised Mike Nolan has not been fired as the Dallas defensive coordinator by now, today, after that game. If one of those touchdowns, you or I could have scored. Okay, maybe you. <laughs> All right, Dallas, <laughs> Dallas left defenseless in their loss to the Baltimore Ravens, and Patty's new mindset coming into his 10th season as a spur coming up. 
Football Coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. The Dallas Cowboys are so bad they've been flexed out of Sunday night primetime, replaced by the Browns and the Giants in Week 15. That's right, the Giants. And now the game against the 49ers will be played on Sunday at noon in two weeks. That's after they fell to 3-9 and nine on the season and now guaranteed their first losing season since 2015. That's after they got blown up by Baltimore last night, 34-17. And the shame of it, it looked like they got off to a good start with the running game with Ezekiel Elliott rushing for 77 yards but could not get into the end zone. Andy Dalton did throw two touchdown passes, including one to Michael Gallup, to keep it close in the first half. But the Dallas defense got worse, giving up 294 yards rushing, made it look too easy for the Ravens. You have to wonder if Mike Nolan survives the season as a new Dallas defensive coordinator because they look lost. We kept getting stalled kind of like right before the red zone. And, you know, we, we made it tougher on the kicks. And so, you know, we got to find a way to convert first downs in those situations, keep drives alive, and, and get down there and score touchdowns. Um, you know, we was balanced. And I mean, there's some good things that, that happened tonight, but, you know, we've, we've got to find a way to just keep pushing, keep getting those first downs to give the chance to, to score. Equally as depressing, the Houston Texans had a chance to upset their division rivals the Colts, only to watch it slip away with a goal line fumble. Now have to regroup to face the Bears in Chicago, who are now five and seven compared to the Texans four and eight. Attention to details all the way to the end. And in the in the clutch, you know, moments like that, we just gotta be locked in all the way. So that's that's pretty much it. But once, you know, Monday hit, it was over with and on to Chicago and you know, we just gotta keep pushing forward and <clears throat> you know, get ready for the next game. Sound too please. San Antonio Spurs taking a day off from training camp before they host their first preseason game, the 2020 2021 season, this Saturday night against OKC. Patty Mills is returning for his 10th season in silver and black, the last leftover from the 2014 NBA championship. And the one thing he wants to bring to the Spurs this season is the player he is with the Australian national team, which is much more than a three point shooter. Really coming strong with that, um, with that play or that, that mindset that I have with the national team and, and bringing it here um, and, and not being apologetic a, about it. And I think that that um, aggressive mindset is um, what makes me me um, and how I've been able to be successful in that role, especially with, with the national team. And the Spurs telling us today all of their preseason games will be broadcast on television starting with this Saturday's game uh, that will be on Fox Sports Southwest. Because right. no fans are allowed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Greg. We'll be right back. Coming up tonight at 6, we continue our series of conversations concerning COVID-19. Tonight, the talk turns to how it's affecting local schools, students, parents. E.C.'s Romero and I will be talking to local experts from Trinity University, getting answers to your questions about how the coronavirus is impacting the education community. We're going to begin at 6.30 on air and online, then continue the conversation on ksat.com at 7 o'clock. You still have time to get your questions in. Just go to ksat.com. Above freezing tonight and tomorrow morning, even just upper 30s in the hill country, low to mid 40s elsewhere. By the afternoon, well into the 70s again. Cooler this weekend, next week, the coolest on Monday. Thanks for watching.